Well, hello, everybody. This is Rob Reinhold with Maverick Currencies. It is nice to see you here. And we are going to be doing a preview today of the U.S. payrolls report tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, so if you've never watched a payrolls report before, um, it's always a good mover. I shouldn't say always. I'm going to say 60 70% of the time, there's a really nice move where we can catch a really nice trade on it. However, every single time it's different. We can't go in thinking, oh, what we did last month is going to work because markets have changed, situations changed, numbers have changed. And so we really need to just hit the ground with the same way we do on every single trade, relative strength and weakness. So let's start off with our relative strength and weakness, and we're going to be looking at our currency basket charts. I'm going to start first off with the dollar. Now, I'm going to say 95% of the time, the dollar is the currency you trade off this. Every now and then, there might be a different currency, but this is really about the dollar. And so finding out where the dollar is right now in its chart pattern is really important because it's likely to continue. Again, every single time there is a, a news announcement, the question is continuation or reversal. So is the dollar going to continue doing what it's doing, or is there going to be a reversal? And if we take a look at dollar here, we can see that we have been in a downtrend all the way since May 12th. May 12th on a four hour chart, downtrend, bounce, downtrend, base, fall, base, fall, bounce. So as you can see here, nothing has told us here to expect there to be a change in the long-term trend. Here's a daily chart, same thing. It, everything is showing us that it's more down than up. So I'm definitely going into this announcement thinking that the dollar has been showing some relative weakness lately. Now look, we have no idea what's going to happen. The report may strengthen the dollar tomorrow. It may make it weaker. It may do nothing. But what we do know is right here, right now, dollar is more weak than strong. Now, I am a big believer in efficient market theory. I was going to say the theory of efficient market theory. <laughs> I know that's, uh, it's not redundant. It's actually not redundant. There is a whole bunch of signs out there or a whole methodology of efficient market theory. And efficient market theory says that, that the market right now, the price you see in everything is everyone's uh, thoughts of what's likely to happen in the future. It's a huge betting system where some people think it's going to go up, some think it's going to go down, but it measures what people's outlook is in the future, not today, but what they think the future is going to be. We have been weakening into this payrolls report. So here's the question. Why? Well, I think the expectations are that the number isn't going to be as good as previously thought. And so if we take a look at the dollar, you have to look at this and say, I'd rather be, be short dollar than long dollar. Now, if you want to play strong dollar, then what you're saying is, I think this report tomorrow is going to unwind everything that's happened over the past couple of weeks and make a new trend higher. And look, and that's fine, but don't make a guess on it. Why don't you wait until there's actually a new trend higher? That's going to be your best play here. On the short side, I still think you can trade the dollar short in this announcement. So the big question is, what do we play it against? That's, that's the question. What do we play the dollar against? Let's go through all the other currencies and let's see which currency looks the strongest. So we're looking to be short dollar into that meeting. You can see here, we've got yen is just horrific. It is weaker than the dollar. So if you were looking to be, to be playing dollar up, to where you thought the dollar is going to be bullish. The yen would be the perfect place to play it against. So you would want to be looking at dollar yen. But if you're looking to be short dollar, you don't want to pair it against another weak currency. Again, you don't make a whole lot of money that way. So let's go on and see what the Swiss franc is doing. And you can see the Swiss franc is doing nothing. There is no reason at all to look at dollar Swiss franc. Let's take a look at the euro. So you can see the euro is weakening, oh, ever so slightly. We are in a very, very tepid, very slow downward move. 
Let's see if there's anything else to pair this against. Let's take a look at Pound. All right, Pound is weak overall. You can see Pound is one of the weaker currencies as well, breaking down below support levels, making some lower lows. So again, if you were looking to be long dollar, maybe you'd look at it against the Pound because the Pound does look weak here. But since we want to be short dollar, we want to find the strong currencies. Let's go take a look at CAD. All right, so here we have CAD. It's, it's in a nice uptrend. You can see we just broke out of a base here. Had a nice breakout of a base. We ran, we pull back to the breakout point and we put in our support level. So that's a very good support level here. And we've got a nice green candle off that bounce. We have no idea what's going to happen with CAD, but we do know that when um, we see charts like this, that most of the time we're going to see at least a run back up to this resistance level. So for me, CAD looks very, very possible for a trade. The thing I don't like it, it is, it's not really strong right here, right now. We pull back, we're bouncing a little bit. Let's see if we can find better strength in the Aussie and the Kiwi. And here we go. Aussie looks great. Aussie looks fantastic. It is by far looking better than anything we looked at. So Aussie dollar jumps to the top of the list. Now look, is it extended here? Yes. Yes, it is. Would we love to be able to buy it at a better price? Absolutely. So this is not a, a pair to chase right now. We are, you know, maybe, let's see, how many hours are we away? About 14 hours away from the meeting or from the announcement. So let, let these 14 hours go. Let's see if we can get a pullback or a base on Aussie because this looks the best at this moment. And if we jump over to Kiwi, okay, Kiwi looks okay. I'm going to say Kiwi looks... Uh, you know, a tiny bit better than CAD, but not much. So if I had to rank my strongest currencies, Aussie number one, Kiwi number two, CAD number three. So at that point, we now know what we're looking to play. We're looking to pair against those currencies. All right, let's talk about the announcement tomorrow. We got some less than good news today or yesterday no, actually it was today because of the holiday. We got the ADP report, which measures private payrolls. It missed expectations. And so the estimates are for 325,000 new jobs created, unemployment rate of 3.5%, and average hourly earnings up 0.4%. Now, this is what the market expects. Now, remember, whenever you're looking to trade news, it's all about what the market expects. Right here, right now, the market is priced for these numbers. If the numbers come out tomorrow, 325K, 0 0.04, or 0.4, and 3.5. Theoretically, the market should not change much because, again, it was priced for these numbers. We need to know, okay, let's say the numbers come out at 500,000 jobs created and, you know, 0.6% in average hourly earnings. All of a sudden, the market's not priced for that. There's going to be a, an adjustment to the prices because that wasn't the expectation. Let's say these numbers come in at 200,000. All of a sudden, now we don't have the expected move. The market needs to readjust prices to fulfill this current market or current condition. We have no idea what the numbers are going to be. We don't need to know what the numbers are gonna be or care we're just going to place some bets on this currency. Say, hey, you know what? We think it's going to be weak. The trend is weak. Everything is weak. Everything's showing down. We have no idea. But that's what it's telling us to look at. We went through all the currencies, and this is our was our velocity score as of yesterday. This is what we looked at yesterday. We liked Aussie and CAD on the long side. Kiwi was basically sitting there holding back. Let's see what happened and changed here over the last 24 hours. The dollar got weaker, which is a really good sign going into the meeting is that we like to see that. We saw the CAD. It wasn't as strong as we thought. It was still strong. And we saw the Kiwi get a lot stronger. So those were the changes that we saw over the last 24 hours. So going into this last 24 hours of the week, we like Aussie, Kiwi, and CAD on the long side. 
Yen looks atrocious. Pound looks, eh, I shouldn't say atrocious, but bad. And the dollar looks bad as well. This is where you want to be trading over the next 24 hours. Now, if you say to yourself, look, I don't want to mess with the U.S. payrolls report. Fine. Just avoid dollar. That's all you have to do is avoid dollar. You want to be looking at Aussie yen, Kiwi yen, CAD yen, maybe pound Aussie, pound Kiwi. Those are going to be places that you should be actively looking for trades. You should not be even looking at Euro and Swiss franc. You should not even be looking at cryptos. That's not where the play is right now. The play is Aussie, Kiwi, long, yen, pound, dollar, short. Any of those crosses. So if you want to avoid the uh, the payrolls report, because again, that payrolls report can bring some volatility in. If you say, hey, I don't want to play that volatility, then just play Aussie yen. Just look at playing Aussie yen. So let's talk about this. We're going to talk about this every time we go into a news report. Three messages of trading news. You can enter before the announcement, which is the riskiest way to do it. You can enter on the announcement, or you can wait until after the announcement. So let's talk about the risks of trading news. So the risk of trading news is number one, slippage. So this here is a one minute chart. This is a one minute chart on the um, pound Aussie. And you can see there was some massive news here. And if someone said, hey, I'm gonna put a stop in, a buy stop at 183.10, because I'm short. This is a one minute move. This thing rallied all the way up to 183.55. Understand that your stop order is if it gets to 183.10, sell it at market. A market order is you get in line. And once you get to the front of the line, you get to get your order done. But there's going to be people in front of you that are getting better prices. And it isn't until you get to the front of that line that your order gets executed. You could have absolutely been executed all the way up here at 103 or 183.50. That is what's called slippage. You had an order in, it didn't get hit at your price because of a fast moving market, and you had to get in line and wait, and this is where you got filled. So slippage is a big problem here, and this is where, again, if you get in before the announcement, this is the largest risk, but also the largest payoff. If you get in before the announcement and it goes your way, it's awesome, it's wonderful. If it goes against you, you're likely going to get some slippage. So whenever we talk to our traders and we say, hey, let's get ready to trade some news. If you want to get in before, we really like pyramiding. Whereas you take a half a position size and then you take double your initial stop. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, we've got a bunch of classes there for you. Or take a third of a position and then have your stop three times as large. That way you get to sit out of the volatility and the, the slippage won't be as bad. Another risk is you can get what's called the whipsaw. Look at this chart on DollarCAD. You can see here, here's the highs or lows on a one minute candle. Let's say someone went long and put in a stop. They got stopped out for a loss. Let's say someone went short, put a stop in up here. They got stopped out for a loss. As you can see here, everyone lost. Anyone who took a position and had a stop within this range lost. It didn't matter. It didn't matter because the volatility got them. This is where, again, if you're looking to trade news, make sure you understand that these things can happen. This is why we really like taking half positions into news announcements with a very wide stop. You avoid a lot of these negatives. So on tomorrow's U.S. payrolls report, I know I'm looking to get in on the news. Now, what that means is, I will have a resting order out there waiting before the news comes out. And if the news comes out and it goes my way, I want to try to get into it. Now I'm going to use a stop limit order. We always use stop limit orders around news announcements because it controls your entry. So for example, let's say I want to play uh, Aussie dollar. And let's say that, uh, you know, I want to get in Aussie dollar if it breaks above uh, 73. Well, I'm gonna put in a stop at 73 and a limit at 73.10. Now what that does 
is that makes it to where I can only be filled between 0.73 and 0.731. I can't get filled anywhere outside of that. So I'm really controlling that entry. So if you don't know stop limit orders, go check out our sessions on stop limit orders. So let's look at actual trade setups. So we already know, we already went through our list and we already know where we're going to hunt. So now it's just a matter of the numbers here. So Aussie dollar is my number one currency pair that I'm looking at. So let's take a look at it. Now this here is on a four hour chart and you can see we just broke out of a pretty long base here. So again, this is a four hour chart. So we probably have about 20 candles in here. Uh, that is over a week. That is over a week of time. We had another one of these bases here and you can see it ran for about 10 candles. So we're about two or three candles into this breakout. Look, I like it here. I, I like Aussie dollar long here. That being said, if I go down to a shorter time frame, like an hourly chart is telling me, okay, just, just not right now. Just not, just don't buy it here at the high. What we want to see is we want to see either a base. We want to see a base or we want to see a pullback where it pulls back to, you know, some level and possibly, you know, this last resistance here at 7230, somewhere around in this area. We have no idea what's going to happen. We're in no big rush. Like I said, I'm going to be putting orders out there before the announcement, probably about five to 10 minutes before the announcement tomorrow. And I'm going to be looking at what happened over the last 15, 16 hours. If we pull back, then I'm going to use our bull pullback tactic to where we are going to put orders out there to say, hey, I want to catch it if it goes above this certain level. Again, I, I can't draw these lines specifically. We are meeting live tomorrow morning for this announcement as a firm. And so we will be actually going through exactly where to put these orders, where to stack them, and where to put your stops. If we get a base tonight, which is what I think we get. We had a really strong day in equities today. I do think we get more of a base action. Then all of a sudden it becomes a lot more simple. If we base uh, high here is 72.70, 72.70, that is where I want to get in. 72.70 on a breakout. So I'm going to have an order out there, you know, 72.75, a buy stop limit on the news to when, when the news comes out. If that number is weaker than expected, then you should see Aussie dollar really take off to the upside. If that number is stronger than expected, my order should never get triggered. It should never get triggered as long as I'm far enough away. Again, this is where we talk about that volatility around the announcement. You, you don't want to be anywhere near the announcement price with, with stop orders. You want to be far enough away to where you only get in if you're catching an actual move. So Aussie dollar looks good. Let's take a look at, you know, I'm going to say Kiwi dollar looks very similar to it. So let's not spend our time on Kiwi dollar. Let's take a look at dollar CAD. I really like the price action here on dollar CAD. We have a really nice base forming here. Earlier this week, we caught a very nice trade on CAD yen. We got into CAD yen well before the Bank of Canada announcement. And we had a nice 60, 70, 80 pip profit built in when the Bank of Canada announced. And we got another 60, 70 pip run after that. This is a very, I, I can't say similar because it's totally different. But what I'm saying is this is a currency pair that right here, right now, this low base is very weak. And these are some of my favorite. We call these high and tight bases. Or this is a low and tight base. Where look, we just had this monster move from 126.75 all the way down to 125.70. And usually things, once they get punished so hard, they have a nice little bounce back. There is no bounce back. There's no one coming in to buy dollar CAD. It's just dead here. I think there's likely going to be a move down from this level. And I'm very interested in catching that move tonight. And then that allows me to go into the announcement with a cushion. I love going into news announcements 
with a profit cushion. For example, in our CAD yen, we had a about a 60 pip profit built into the trade before the BOC comes out. You simply put your stop or break even. Or you can take half down and leave the other half. You all of a sudden have a lot of freedom to how you want to play that because you've got, okay, how much of my profits do I want to risk? This is the same trade, the same premise here. So if we take a look at where is the level here, 125.63. 125.63. So I'm looking at that level saying, you know what? I am willing to stick a stop out there tonight to try to get filled going into the report. And if I don't have more than probably 30 pips a profit, I'm going to bail on the trade before the announcement comes out and then look to trade it again on the announcement. But I think there's a pretty good opportunity overnight. Like I said, we close really strong in equities. Let me pull that chart up here. We close really strong in equities. That's a very strong close. And if you take a look at a daily chart, you can see this is just a really good bull pullback and a bounce. We are likely going to get another risk on move tomorrow to end the week on Friday. So risk on looks much better than risk off. So anything, again, Aussie, Kiwi, CAD, this is really where you want to be focusing on the long side. So back to dollar CAD. I'm going to stick an order out there below this low base at 125.62. And I'm going to have a stop above this 13 EMA on an hourly chart. So 126. 126 is going to be my initial stop. And then, like I said, I'm going to move my stop down to break even once I have the same amount of profit that I had at initial risk, which is about 38 pips. And at that point, I'll look at it, see how, how close we are to my stop price. If, if I'm not more than 30 pips away from that stop price, I will exit before the announcement and look to re-enter on the announcement. There's a couple other things, again, Kiwi dollar you could take a look at, but I think Aussie dollar looks superior. All right, let's wrap this up here. Stop limit orders. For any before or on the news trades, stop limit orders. Again, you have to control your entry. If you're doing a second stage entry where you're entering after the announcement's out, after the little bit of craziness one or two minutes after, you don't need to use a stop limit order. But stop limit orders absolutely before. Into the report, we have the dollar is weak. Remember, you can either play continuation or reversal. I think we're going to have a risk on move. The equity markets had a lot of strength, close at the high today. That's telling us we're likely to have a risk on move, which is not good for dollar. Dollar is a risk off trade. And so everything's set up nicely to have a continuation of weakness in the dollar. We have no idea if that's going to happen. But once that report comes out, there's going to be a burst of energy. And if that report is a little bit weaker than expected, I expect this dollar to move down quite significantly. And we want to pair it up against Aussie, Kiwi, and CAD. It looks the strongest. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Have a great day. Goodbye.